Good morning, church, and thank you for tuning in to our Sunday morning service here at Victory Outreach Inglewood. My name is Caitlin, and I have a couple of announcements for you. But first, we'd like to remind you that your support and tithes help our ministry grow and thrive. If you love your church, please show your support. Donating is so very easy, too. It's easier than shopping online or purchasing a cup of coffee. All you have to do is visit our website and click the Donate tab. Thank you in advance for all of your support. We want to remind you that Bible studies are still going on line you can reach out to your favorite bible study leader and tune in we'd love to see you there also reminding you that wednesday nights we have our hour of power prayer if you'd love for a miracle to happen or you need some impactful prayer please join us we have a zoom link thank you okay joshua 1 9 this is my command be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not, or discouraged for the lord your god is with you Wherever you go, amen, God is with you. You are not alone, amen. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, you are not alone, amen. Almighty God is with you, amen. So we're going to pray for the needs this morning, but know that, amen. Take, uh, take courage, like he says. Take courage knowing that almighty, all-powerful God is with you wherever you go. Father, we want to praise you this morning and thank you and honor you, mighty God, and exalt you and magnify your precious name because you and you alone are just worthy to be praised, worthy of all the honor and all the praises and all the glory, our, our Savior, almighty God. And Father, we just come before you this morning in the name of Jesus, my God, seeking your face, my God, seeking your favor, mighty God. We are your people, my God, and we seek you this, this morning, my God, that you would provide, my God, for the needs of your people. We want to pray, my God, for those that are sick, my God, those that are fighting a coronavirus, my God, that you would bring healing, that you would rebuke that evil virus in the name of Jesus and provide healing and comfort and strength, Lord. We want to continue to lift up our sister Angie, Father, and pray for her healing, Lord. Pray, my God, that you strengthen her body, that you give her that sense of comfort. Lord, we lift her up to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Also, we want to continue to pray for, for Freddie and for Phyllis, my God, and for Socorro, my God, that you will give her that hope, my God, that you would minister to her, that you would reveal yourself to her, that she would look to you, mighty God. Also want to pray for Leo's mom, Lord, for whatever she's going through, my God, that you would minister to her, that you would meet her needs, my God, that you would intervene, my God, and that you would provide, my God, for her needs, healing and strength, my God, peace and comfort, Lord. Also want to continue praying for Adrian and Shatera, my God. Also Ebony, my God, her little baby, my God, we pray, my God, for a healthy baby. We pray that your hand be upon that child, my God, that your favor be upon that child, that that child will grow up, my God. Oh, to be, my God, uh, used by you, my God, in this world, my God, to make a difference, Lord. We pray your favor over her baby, my God. Also want to continue praying for Marlene, my God, and her little baby, my God, and her family, my God, that you continue providing, my God, uh, 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 just speak, my God, into their lives, my God, and, and bless them, my God, and draw them into closer to you my God like never before also want to continue to pray for our families our loved ones my God we pray for Emmanuel for his family my God for for guidance and wisdom my God that you would provide my God guidance and wisdom that you would speak my God that you would make clear my God your will and your ways my God with whatever they need Father God we continue praying for our marriages that you protect our marriages that you strengthen our marriages Lord we continue praying for uh, my God those that may be that are struggling my God with finance my God, they may need a job, Lord. We pray uh, for, for Daniel, my God, for transportation, Lord. We continue praying uh, for, for Joseph, my God, that you continue providing for peace, my God, and comfort, Lord. Also, we lift up Arturo to you, Father, and we pray for deliverance, my God. We pray, my God, that you would provide, my God, uh, wherever the direction that he's going in, my God, that a roadblock would be there, my God. Oh, that he would turn around, my God, that he would turn to you, Lord. We pray for his salvation. We pray, my God, that he'll surrender his heart and his life to you, Lord. Make a way for him, my God. Intervene, my God. Like, 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 like Saul, my God, that became Paul, my God. Oh, my God, remove the scales, my God. Reveal yourself to him. We pray, my God, for his salvation and his deliverance, Lord. Also, Gabriel, Lord, we pray for deliverance, Lord, and salvation. Also, we want to continue to lift up the many families that are grieving at this time, Father. They are suffering from, from loss, Lord. We continue praying for your peace, your strength, 
My God, just minister, my God, lift her, just comfort them, my God, be with them, Lord. We thank you for who you are, my God, and any other need that's out there, any worry or concern, Father, we pray you meet that need. Bless your people, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Victor Outreach Inglewood, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. I am glad you're here once again. Uh, and thank you for all of you that joined us for our prayer walk yesterday. It was powerful. In fact, our prayer ministry is really thriving. We've been praying for so many people. And I, I really appreciate the, uh, the requests that have been coming in. Uh, and we've been praying for you and your loved ones. So continue to keep us updated on the things that we can pray for. And let us know if you see a change happening in those that we've been lifting up. Well, this morning I'm going to be reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 2. Uh, I'll, I'll read verses 1 through 3, and I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. And this is what it says. It says, Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask this morning that you would speak to us through the words of this story, that you would reveal to us your purpose and your plan, not just for this child, not just for this individual, but for those like him today, those men, those women, those children, those individuals, Father, that need to be released into the hands of God. We just ask that you would give us wisdom and strength. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let me begin this morning by asking you a question. Uh, do you trust God with those that you love the most? Can you trust God with them? Can you place them in the hand of God and trust that God knows exactly what to do with them? Do you trust God that much? We've all heard the saying, let go and let God. You know, I, I know I hear it all the time. I, you know, whatever I, you know, you know, I, I see Debbie, I say, hey, Debbie, let go, let God. She tells me that all the time, you know, let go, and let God. But what does that really look like? What does it look like, especially when it comes to our loved ones, those you care about, those you've been praying for, those we think about all the time that we want so much to protect, to keep them sheltered, to, to keep them uh, away from the evil, the dangers. And we we connect with them. We we provide for them and, and cover them and do all that we can. Well, this morning, I believe the Lord is urging me to speak about trusting God with those that you love, to trust God with those that you love, those that you've prayed for. And maybe you haven't seen much progress in their lives. Perhaps you've prayed for them for years and things have not changed. In fact, in some cases, it may seem like things have gotten worse. Even though you've prayed for them for a long time, that son or that daughter, that mother or that father, that person that we've held on to tightly over the years, trying to protect them. But over time, rather than things getting better, it seems as though we're becoming more and more limited in our ability to protect them and our ability to hold on to them. You know, this happens all the time uh, with people without a hope. But, but it happens to Christians. Christians often find themselves in, in a scenario like this for a number of reasons. Loved ones who struggle with substance abuse. And we want to see them delivered. Right? Loved ones who love the world. They, they may have grown up in church. They, they may know God and know the hope that Christ offers. But they love the world and, and they have one foot here and one foot there. And they struggle with direction. Or, or perhaps it's an individual that wrestles with rebellion. 
They just can't seem to to want to just uh, settle down and, and follow the guidance of their parents or those that care about them, whatever it may be. As time goes on, we realize that we've done all we can. Have you been there before? And then we can no longer hold on to them. It gets to the point where, where we're, we're trying so much, but we're losing the grip. So this story illustrates one of the most difficult things a man or a woman of God will ever be asked to do. And that is to trust God with someone you love. Now, that seems strange that that would be a difficult thing for a Christian to do. But believe me, that is one of the hardest things to do, to take the person you love so much, the one you want to protect so much, and to simply place them in the hands of God, to release them in faith, knowing that God knows exactly what he's doing. Sounds simple. Oh, but that's so difficult to do. Here in Exodus chapter 2, this is not very long before the birth of Moses, where there was an edict given by the king of Egypt, a, a decree, an announcement, a new law, that all the Hebrew children that were male, boys that were born to the Israelite people, that they were to be killed. This edict went out just shortly before the birth of, of Moses. And so he ordered them to be killed. And this was a shocking decree for, for the nation. But God graciously allowed many of the male children to live. And, and he did that through uh, these two women, Pua and Shifra. I spoke about them just recently, this past Mother's Day. And, and we described them as heroes who fought against the edict of, a, of an evil king to make sure that these, that these children lived. Well, eventually, Pharaoh found out that, hey, these, these kids are still uh, surviving. They, they survived the edict. And so he created a new order. And this time, it wasn't to the midwives, but to all the people of the nation of Egypt. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 22, it says, Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. And this was concerning the Israelites. Every boy that is born to you must be thrown into the Nile. But let every girl live. Take them and throw them into the river. Get rid of them. That is the edict of the king. That is the command of the king. Imagine those parents whose sons survived that first wave of death to hear this second decree being given to them. This mandatory uh, uh, command that every citizen is to get involved, right? You see something, you say something, right? Oh, she, she's pregnant. Watch her. Make sure that it's a girl that she has. Watch her. Watch your neighbor. Watch the, the Israelites. If you see a pregnant woman, you make sure you find out what she has, right? These were hostile times, for the male babies, hostile times for mothers, for parents, frightening times. Those who were pregnant, their pregnancies could not be hidden. They might have tried their best to hide their pregnancies and they had no idea what they were having, whether it was a boy or a girl. Right. And everyone would be curious at the time of birth. What is she having? What does she have? Weren't you pregnant last week? Uh, you know, what did you have? Right. And the whole country is involved in exposing these young mothers. Imagine what that would be like. If it was a girl, hallelujah. But if it was a boy, you can't begin to imagine the stress and the anxiety on these parents. Right? And I would venture to say that the stress alone might have caused some of them uh, to, to miscarry. Carrying this burden of, of what if my baby is a boy? Mothers and fathers and family members who tried their very best to protect their children from the forces of death, from threats and destruction, but are powerless to do anything to help. You know, we're not told in this particular instance the name of Moses's mother, but we do know that she had her baby son 
And so she had a successful birth. And we do know that she tried her best to hide him. She tried her best to protect him. For three months, she kept him quiet. For three months, she, she hid him. And she raised him in secrecy to keep him from the command of the king, from a nation that was looking to destroy her son. But after a short while, she realized, man, I can't protect my son any longer. I can't protect him anymore. I I can't carry him through life like this. At some point, I I have to let him go as much as I love him, as much as I want to keep him close and pour myself, my love into his life to defend him from the threats in this nation that we're living in, all these disasters, all these threats, uh, you know, people, neighbors or children are dying all over the place, right? It's impossible. I can't, I can't do it. I can't protect my son. So she had to make one of the most difficult decisions a loved one will ever have to make. Difficult. And that's fascinating to me that it is a difficult thing to say, hey, place them in the hand of God. Right? Hand your child over to God. Place him in the hands of God to realize that as much as I care for this baby, as much as I'm willing to do for this baby, I'm just simply in the way. I'm just going to prolong the inevitable. I need to hand him over to God. So she fashioned a, a, a little basket of papyrus. She coated it with tar and pitch to try and make it as waterproof as possible. And interestingly enough, she actually observed Pharaoh's order and she placed her son in the Nile. Now imagine all the things that could go wrong. And I'm sure her mind was swirling with all kinds of ideas of what could go wrong. What if a crocodile just happens to notice him in the Nile? Or a snake comes by? Or, or what if the basket sinks? Or what if it gets caught up in the current and just flows downstream? Or sits in the sun and is scorched? You know, or, or it takes a day, two days, five days before someone finds him and he starves to death in the basket. A whole number of things might have passed through her mind, but despite the fears that She thought about, despite the fears that she imagined, she trusted God with her loved one. She let him go. And that little basket itself became the hands of God. She placed him in the hands of God and just kind of shoved him off in the direction that God would take him. Just as Noah and his family were in that ark in the hands of God. He knows what to do when the world is chaotic and crazy. He knows how to protect. He knows how to keep us safe. He's able to do far more than you and I can do. She placed him in the hands of God and God's hands sheltered that baby, right? God's hands protected that baby in ways that his mother and father could never have protected him. See, this is trust. This is what trust is all about. Trust is a firm belief in the reliability of someone else. And in this case, the reliability of God. Trust is being confident that we can place our children, our loved ones in the hands of a God. A firm belief that he is able to care for them to protect them in ways that we cannot care for them and protect them. It's the essence. This idea of trust is the essence of what it means to be a Christian, to have confidence, faith, and hope in God. It is necessary if we're called to be a believer, right? That Jesus died on the cross and his death on the cross is enough for me to trust that And to live my life with the confidence that God is able to keep us. Trust is synonymous with faith. Trust and faith go hand in hand. It means that you are thoroughly convinced that God knows exactly what he's doing. And that he loves your loved one 
more than you do. That's trust. You talk about tough. That's hard to do. This is hard to do. I seriously doubt that, that we'll ever be asked to throw babies in the river. At least I hope that that never happens. But at some point, you will have to place a loved one in the hands of God. You may never have to do some crazy thing like, like throw babies in a river, but you will, at some point in your life, have to hand someone over to God. And everyone will eventually have to come to grips with this. Some mothers hold on. Some fathers hold on. Wives, girlfriends, grandparents, they hold on when they ought to let go. They hold on, and, and whatever the scenario may be, when the safest place for your loved one, the safest place for those that you care about, is in the hands of God. Yeah, I'm reminded of, of the disciples in the boat with Jesus in the midst of the storm. Storm was raging. Now, normally, the worst place to be in the midst of the storm, in the middle of the lake, would be in that boat, right there in the middle of the lake, with the water swirling around you, the, way, the waves crashing over the edges of the boat, the wind blowing and, and howling. That would seem to be the, the worst place to be in the midst of the storm. But because Jesus is in the boat, that's the safest place. There's no better place to be. She placed her son in the hands of God. She let go. She, she pushed him off and let go and let God do his thing. God knows what to do. Many try to hold on. Many try to pamper and protect. Many try to shelter and, and, and shield those that we love. And we simply get in the way where God needs to do some work in their lives, where God needs to take them down a journey. And, and things may not always be easy for them. In fact, they may need to face some difficult times. But God knows what he's doing. Put that man in the basket. Put that daughter of yours in the basket, that son of yours. Put him in the basket and hand them over to God. Place them in the God's hands. That son of yours, that daughter, trust God because he knows what to do. Don't worry about what might happen. Man, we hear that all the time. Well, I don't want to let go because this might happen. And we think about all the scenarios of the things that could go wrong. What if they don't come back? What if uh, they, they get into trouble? What if they meet up with the wrong crowd? What if they overdose, get shot? You know, get jumped, beat up, have no place to live, become homeless. What if? And there are all kinds of what ifs. The mother of Moses had all kinds of what ifs that she wrestled with as she shoved her baby off in the hands of God. But she trusted God with the one she loved. She trusted God to make the right decision. And the thought of what might go wrong some, in some cases, it causes parents to jump in the Nile after them, right? We, we, we want to trust God, and we place them there, and we, we push them off, and, and there they go, and we think about it, and we think about what might go wrong, and we jump in after them. You know, aquí vengo, here I come, right? My baby, my here I come. But despite the dangers, real dangers that Moses faced, very real dangers, he survived. Moses survived the crocodiles and the snakes. He survived the current, the heat of the sun, mosquitoes, piojos, whatever you might think of. He survived it all and grew up to be one of the greatest men in history. And ironically, he led his nation through the waters, dangerous waters of the Red Sea. The same way he passed through the waters of the Nile. He'd been there before. He knows the way to help others. You have loved ones that are in bondage. I know how to break free. I've been there before. God has taken me on this journey. He's protected me in the hard times. Follow me. I know the way out of this bondage. So my question this morning is this. 
Have you been holding on to somebody? Have you been holding on in hopes to protect them, in hopes to to keep them and and to lead them to Christ on your own? Do you have the Messiah complex? Are are you are you their shelter and their covering? Have have you gotten your your claws down deep inside of them where, where you can't let go this morning? I want to challenge you to let go, hand them over to God in a land of hostility, surrounded by dangers and threats. Trust God. Trust God with your loved one. Trust God with your children. Trust God with your marriage. Put them in the basket. Put that husband of yours in the basket. Just push him and kick that thing down the river and let God do what God does. Place them in the hands of God. He loves them far more than we could ever love them. So there's just a couple of things that I want to share with you this morning, and I'll let you go. Number one, trust is an expectation. There's an expectation with trust. Whenever we're called upon to trust someone, there's an expectation that they're going to carry out some specific task or responsibility. There's an expectation that they're going to come through with their duty to come through. We expect something, right? And, and so trust is having that expectation that you do your part and they're going to do their part. That's, that's what it's all about. And there's no one that we can trust more, especially with our loved ones, than God. We can expect God to meet them. We can expect God to, you might not see God at the edge of the Nile. You might not see God when you shove them off. But believe me, he is there and he will protect your loved ones. I'm aware uh, that the reality of those that that have passed away. I'm aware of the reality of those who who don't make it. And that's a reality that we have to face. And and there's always the possibility of, of those that we let go of that we never see again. That's a possibility. I realize that. But the Apostle Paul tells us this, that hope never disappoints us. Hope never disappoints us. He says that hope that is seen is not hope at all. Hope that is seen. If you're holding on to someone, that's not hope. Right. It's when you let go and you don't see them fully, completely in the place that you've prayed for. Then you're able to hope for them. Because nobody hopes for something they already have. Hope works best when you hope for what you don't have. And so Paul says in Romans 8.25, if we hope for what we don't have, we wait for it patiently. And hope is one of the greatest blessings that God has given to humanity. It empowers our faith. It empowers our prayer. We envision those, those dreams coming to pass. So let go with expectations that God knows what he's doing. And number two, and lastly, trust is all about exchange. It's about exchange. It's about letting go of control in exchange for the wisdom and the strength of those who have taken control. We give up something in order to receive the protection and the strength of others. To trust someone means that even if you don't have full knowledge of what it is they're going to do, you don't have full knowledge of where they're going, you simply release control. I'll release control. You do your thing. There's an exchange there. I'm sure somehow in her heart, this mother, before she let Moses go, God must have spoken to her heart. Do you really want your baby? Right. And, and, and she probably heard that voice. Do you want him? Do you love him? Do you really want your baby? If you really want your baby, give him to me. And he may be saying that to some of us. You really want the person you've been holding on to? You really want them? If you want them, give them to God. Let go. Give them to the Lord. God says, choose my way rather than your way. Choose my power rather than your power. Choose my plans rather than your plans, my resources rather than your resources. There's an exchange here. Let go. Let go, and you'll receive something in return. 
And in spite of all that this mother gave up, in spite of the difficulty of letting her son go, she didn't lose a single thing. In fact, she gained her son. She gained more than a son. She gained a deliverer. And not only did he deliver her from her slavery, but he delivered the entire nation. Who have you been holding on to this morning? This morning, I want to challenge you to place that person in the hands of God because he knows what to do. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we just ask this morning for your grace, for your power, for your control over the loved ones, my God, that we are so concerned about. We place them in your hands. We let go, Father God. We, we stop trying to figure out life for them. We stop trying to make it all work for them. And we release them into the mighty hand of our Father in heaven. Take control, Father God. Do your thing. And we pray, Father God, I pray for those, my God, that have been struggling. Mothers, fathers, parents, brothers, sisters, concerns about their loved ones. That you would move and meet their need. This morning, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, this morning, I certainly hope that the Lord spoke to your heart and that you are able to let go of that loved one because God knows what he's doing. Amen. God bless you this morning.